Hello everyone, my name is Robert Tovar and I'm so glad that I have you joining me here right now to discuss my favorite topic, scholarships. As you may have heard by now, the scholarship application for the fall 2023 and spring 2024 academic year is now open. So I hope you stick around as I give you some background on the scholarship program and how to be successful on your application this time around. Before we jump right in, I want to give you all some background about myself. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Robert Tovar. I am a manager on the Research and Innovation Team, and I've been on SHIP staff since March 2022. But a fun fact about me is that I interned with SHIP twice as an undergrad. So before coming full-time, I interned with SHIP twice and have been to multiple national conventions, uh, multiple NILAs, and I just attended my first RLDC last spring. So really, really love SHIP and the familia that I've gained from it and I wanted to be back and now I'm here. Um, and just a really fun fact about myself is I'm a really big advocate for equitable and accessible education for all. Um, and um, scholarships is one of those ways in which I'm helping and making education accessible. Um, and right there at the bottom is my um, email. So please feel free to send me any questions that you may have on this presentation or about our scholarship program. Um, and I'll also have more contact information at the end. This right here is the agenda of everything that I will be covering in this presentation. Um, so I'll go over what the scholarship program is. Um, we'll take a look at the 2023-2024 scholarship opportunities, look at the program requirements, um, take a look at the timeline, um, and then I'll give you some insight on to signing up for membership if you're not already a member, um, then applying for the scholarship, what our review process looks like, as well as the notification process, and then what happens when you are selected as a scholarship recipient. A question I often get asked um, managing the scholarship program is why scholarship program? What is it about the scholarship program that makes it so important? Um, and really the problem is that Hispanic, there is an underrepresentation of Hispanic students in STEM, in higher education, and in the industry. Um, and the reason for our program, our why, is financial need. Um, and we proposed a solution being a scholarship program and that's to provide financial assistance to as many students as we can while we actively advocate for representation with our university and industry partners. And that is why scholarship. That is why scholarship is so important and why we do what we do um, because we wanna lessen the burden that tuition may cause on you as you navigate higher education. Moving on from the why, um, I really want to highlight the different scholarship opportunities that we offer at SHIP um, with the scholarship program. The first one being SHIP funded scholarships. Um, those scholarships, think of those as your SHIP undergrad, SHIP grad, SHIP PhD, um, SHIP professional. Those are SHIP funded scholarships. Um, and this past year, we've had over 100 recipients of one of those. Um, and then we also have our corporate funded scholarships. So those scholarships are funded by our industry partners. Um, and we had over a million dollars in corporate funded scholarships and we had over 75 recipients of those types of scholarships. So really, really great, um, great movement there. Uh, and that fund is constantly growing. And then we also have the individual giving scholarship. Um, and that one is also growing actively and we were able to give over $25,000 away um, this past cycle. So really exciting stuff. We had a record breaking year and hoping to break an even break another record next year. So now that you all know the types of scholarships that we offer at SHIP, um, I want to highlight the requirements for th these scholarships, um, specifically right now looking at the SHIP funded scholarships um, and these requirements um, are also very similar to those for the individual giving. Um, the biggest requirement is that you must be an active SHIP member um, and also a full-time student pursuing a STEM degree. Um, however, for professionals, um, half-time status is required. Um, the minimum GPA for our scholarships um, for this upcoming cycle just dropped from a 2.75 down to 2.5. Um, so they were hoping to have um, a bigger pool of applicants um, and give more scholarships to anybody who needs them and would benefit from them. Um, and then the last thing is that citizenship is not a requirement to be 
um, considered or to receive a scholarship, um, one of our ship funded scholarships. The requirements for the corporate funded scholarships and the ship funded scholarships are very similar um, for uh, corporate scholarships. Um, you have to be an active ship member again and you also need to be a full-time student pursuing a step degree. So those are similar to the ship funded scholarships. Um, where the differences are are the GPA requirements and citizenship requirements. Some of our corporate partners require that um, you be a citizen in order to be able to qualify and receive a scholarship from them. Um, and some of them have higher GPAs than the 2.5. Um, so we'll have that information listed on our website so you know exactly which scholarships um, have different GPA requirements and which ones may have citizenship requirements. Shifting gears here a little bit, I wanted to highlight our membership department. Um, our membership department falls under the engagement office that's led by Dr. Jose Silva. Um, but within that office and in the membership department, we have Ana, um, who does member relations. We have Alexis Madrano, who also does member relations and database services. And then we have Fernando Hinojosa, who does chapter operations. Um, and they play an integral role in helping me do what I do in awarding scholarships. Um, so these are your primary points of contact if you have any questions regarding um, your scholarship or your membership type. Um, if it's active, not active, or if you're having issues logging in, um, they'll be your points of contact. Um, and if there's anything chapter related, Fernando will be your point of contact for that. Um, the best way to get a hold of them if you have questions about membership, anything membership related, um, is membership at ship.org. Um, and they're very responsive and they get back um, and can help you out with anything you need there. Um, if it's really scholarship related, anything to do with the scholarship application specifically, um, or the timeline or process, those emails should be directed to scholarships at ship.org. For those of you that are excited to become a SHIP member, if you're not already a SHIP member, um, I quickly wanted to walk you through on how to join or where to go to join. Um, so you're just going to go to ship.org and then once you're on our, on our landing page, you're just going to hit join right up here at the top right hand corner and you'll be taken to um, the page you need to go to to be able to create your profile and do everything you need to do to get set up. Um, after you select join from our main page, you're going to be taken to a site that looks very similar to this one right here. Um, and then you're going to click join membership. And again, you'll be uh, instructed on how to set up your profile and what you need. And we'll just collect some um, demographic information for uh, from you. And you'll be ready to apply from, for scholarships um, pretty soon after that. For those of you that are not SHIP members um, and are still unsure if you should become a member, um, I wanted to highlight all the membership benefits that come with being part of our familia. Um, again, the biggest one being the access to more than one and a half million dollars in scholarship offerings. Um, that is huge and um, it's very helpful for for our students to have access to the scholarship, these scholarship offerings. Um, other benefits include internship, fellowship, and co-op opportunities. Um, you have exclusive access to the SHIP Career Center. Um, you'll get tips for resume writing and interviewing. We also have tons of career, career and professional development opportunities that are constantly happening. There's leadership training opportunities. Um, and then you also get discounted registration to national, regional, and local events. Um, so you'll be able to network and interact with the familia and industry partners and um, academic partners. So there's a lot of great opportunities there as well. Um, and then you have access to competitions and awards um, that come with being part of the familia. And one of the biggest things is, the, it's worded here as access to a nationwide network of industry leaders and peers. Um, but it's really just access to our familia. Um, you'll get to know people in your local chapters, in your regions, um, and it's just a really, really great opportunity um, and resource for you. So highly, highly, highly encourage you to become a member if you're not already. And if you are currently a member, I encourage you to continue your membership um, through undergrad, whether you go to grad school or just enter the industry, um, keeping your professional membership as well. Is very important. 
So now that we've covered, um, you know, the high level overview of the scholarship program and we went through the membership and membership benefits and how to join, um, I really want to turn your atten attention to the scholarship timeline for the 2023-2024 um, academic year. Um, and again, when I say 2023-2024 academic year, I'm referring to fall 2023 and spring 2024. So the applications opened um, at National Convention on November 6, 2022. Um, so as of today, you can go in and start your application and complete your application. Um, and the applications will then close on April 2nd, 2023. Again, that's April 2nd, 2023 at 1159 Pacific Standard Time. So um, make note of that. Um, and then from there on May 29th, 2023, we'll go ahead and start um, sending out award notifications. Um, they won't all be done on May 29th, but we'll go ahead and start rolling those out. Um, in order to receive your scholarship funds, we'll need some um, documentation from you. So those documents will be due by July 7th, 2023, um, with the hope and goal that fund disbursement begins on July 14th, 2023. Um, National Convention will start on November 1st, um, so hopefully we see you joining us in Salt Lake City. And then after National Convention, the next big date for this cycle is the spring disbursement. Um, documents will be due on January 5th, 2024, so we can start processing those and get those dispersed um, starting January 12th, 2024. Now it seems like a long time away, but these years go by so, so quickly. So um, just be aware of these dates um, and you'll have access to this timeline on our website as well. And now the really fun part, um, so how and where to apply. So there's multiple ways in which you can get to the scholarship application. The easiest, um, I would say, is by going to ship.org, then hovering over engage programs and then selecting scholarship. And then there will be a button that says apply now on that page and you just select that and it'll take you right to the application. Um, so if you haven't done it already, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to do it now, get it started and get it done as soon as possible. One big question is how do I know to apply or how do I even get started? And I always say, you know, make sure that you um, read and understand the requirements for the scholarships that you're applying for. Um, and the second one being making sure that your membership is going to stay in active status during the entire scholarship cycle. That's very, very important. Um, and if you're unsure of your status, you know, you can look in your portal. Um, and if you can't get access to your portal, that's when you reach out to membership and they'll go ahead and help you out and get you access. Um, and then the last thing is, you know, once you know that you meet the requirements and you've activated your membership, um, just gathering your scholarship materials, which we'll go ahead and dive into next. So what I went ahead and did for you all is I created an application materials checklist. So after you know that you meet the minimum requirements and you've activated your membership, um, go through this checklist and ensure that you have all of this information before you actually start the application. So, you know, easiest thing, make sure you know your name, your full name, um, and then good contact info. So that way we can reach out to you with any updates or let you know that you received a scholarship. Um, that's very, very important. Um, the next thing is going to be demographic information, financial information, academic information. Um, we will ask for a resume and professional headshot. Um, and then also preparing your scholarship essays ahead of time. Um, and I'll go ahead and do a deeper dive and see some of these um, up next. Um, and then any links to exciting projects and or accomplishments is also really important and really help you stand out from the rest of the crowd. For financial information, we're really looking for five things. We're looking to see if you applied for FAFSA. Um, we're looking to see what your expected family contribution is, or EFC for short. Um, we also want to know how many people are in your household, um, what the total household income is, and employment opportunities, are, or what your employment status is, rather. For academic information, we, go, we do ask for a little bit more information. So we want to know what university or institution you're attending. We want to know what your GPA is. 
Um, we also want to know what you're majoring, what your degree is. Um, we want to know your academic levels. So if you're um, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, um, or graduate student, um, we want to know if you're a full-time student or a part-time student. We also collect your high school um, information as well. Um, and then we ask of your expected graduation date for um, your university as well as we ask for an unofficial, a copy of your unofficial transcript and the application. When it comes to the resume and professional headshot, please, please, please remember to upload a PDF version of a professional resume. Um, and then also, um, please ensure that your headshot is a professional headshot, that it's a clear picture um, and it's not your Instagram selfie. Although I'm sure they are great, um, we really want a clear professional headshot that we can go ahead and share with corporate partners or we can share on our social media channels. Um, and um, if you ensure that it is a JPEG file, that is also really, really important. All right, if you've made it this far, you get um, a little bit of exclusive access to the four essay scholarship questions that we ask in the application. Um, so we ask some of our eyes, your life experiences and any challenges that have impacted your path to higher education um, for one. Um, the next essay question is discuss your motivation for pursuing a STEM degree. Um, the third one is describe your volunteer community experience with SHIP or other organizations. And then the last one is how will a SHIP scholarship impact your life and education? Be mindful that these each essay question is only 250 words. so. If you use all 250 words for each one, it's a thousand words max. Um, so try to be concise, but also detail and highlight the best parts of yourself and your the progress that you've made to be where you are at today. Um, that's really important. And as I always tell any applicant, bring your authentic self to your essays um, and make sure that that shines through. This is an opportunity for you to highlight the best pieces of yourself um, and make sure that those shine through. So don't be afraid to um, talk yourself up and make yourself stand out. Another way to make your application stand out is to highlight your projects and or accomplishments. So there's an opportunity for you to link videos or PDF files um, to any research things that you've done, opportunities, um, photos of you stemming, um, as well as anything, any volunteer work that you've done. Um, you know, you highlight it sometimes in your essays, um, but this is just another way in which you can show the reviewer any extras that you've done. Again, so just make yourself stand out from the crowd and um, really let your application shine. So I highly encourage you all to include these pieces in your application. They are not necessarily a requirement, but again, highly, highly, highly encourage you to add these pieces to your application. All right, so the next question that I always get is, you know, after the application closes, what happens next? And really what happens next starts even before the application closes, and that's with the scholarship reviewer recruitment. Um, that will start in March of 2023, and I'll, my goal is to have a review committee um, built out by April 2023 so we can go ahead and start those reviews um, those reviews will then happen between March and April. And then once those reviews are done, those reviews will be collected and then the applications will be ranked and scholarship decisions will be made. Um, so that's what happens on the back end once the application um, is close to closing and once it closes. Um, I also want to make sure that I highlight that um, the review process is an anonymous process. So the reviewers will not know whose application belongs to who. Um, they'll just go ahead and receive um, the essays and any other um, information that you um, provide, but we try to make it as anonymous as possible to keep it as fair as possible. All right, so the scholarship application is closed, reviews are done. And now the f real fun begins because the award notifications start and those will start to roll out um, May 29th, 2023. 
um, which is earlier than we've ever done before, but we want to make sure that you have ample time to, you know, collect the documents that we'll need once you're awarded a scholarship, and then it gives us ample time to also process those documents and get those funds dispersed to you before the start of your academic year. Um, I also want to highlight, it's really important that you add scholarships at ship.org to your email contacts, um, because what I've seen happen time and time again is that folks don't have us in your email contacts, and then our emails then go to your spam. So you will miss your, um, your scholarship email um, if you're awarded. So again, make sure that you include and add scholarships at ship.org to your email contact. So let's just say, you know, you received the notification that you are receiving a scholarship from SHIP. Um, the next thing that you need to do is complete the online form. Um, we will do document verification. Uh, we'll ask you to do a thank you letter to the donor. Um, I also want to highlight that the disbursements are not in a lump sum. They happen in the fall and the spring. So we'll ask you to provide documentation um, to verify your eligibility once again for the fall. And then we'll go ahead and do it again in the spring. Um, again, like I mentioned in January. Um, and one really, really awesome thing is that these funds will go directly to you um, and not the college or university. So that way you can use them to um, help fund what you need to get through your program. I just want to take some time to say thank you all for joining me today um, and taking time to go through this, um, this webinar or this presentation really of our scholarship program and the um, upcoming current cycle of fall 2023, spring 2024. Um, again, my name is Robert Tovar. I manage the scholarship program. So if you have any questions, um, you have my contact information that I provided at the beginning. Um, but again, that email is robert at ship.org. Um, and the best way to reach me if you have anything scholarship related is using the scholarships at ship.org um, to go ahead and send an email with any questions that you may have. Um, and I just want to say thank you again and wish you all the best of luck with the scholarship application, please feel free to reach out to me um, with any questions or concerns and I'll be happy to help out. Thank you.